Hey, what's going on, everyone? Um, here to talk to you guys today about um, MPLS traffic engineering fast reroute uh, tunnels, and specifically focus on uh, focusing on node protection and um, uh, and link protection. Um, so in this particular example, what I'm going to do is this is my topology that I've been working with here. Go ahead and zoom in in a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to actually configure on router 6, we're going to configure two tunnels. We're going to configure one tunnel to router 5, and then we're going to take one tunnel to router 10. And in that process, we're going to have fast reroute happening here in the middle of the core. So uh, what I did do uh, pre to, you know, before getting this uh, configuration uh, started, I already have ISIS configured in my core. It's running uh, ISIS, like I said, um, and I already enabled MPLS traffic engineering tunnels on the ISIS process as well as all the transit interfaces along the path um, at the core. So that's already pre-done. So the only thing that I got to worry about now is actually configuring the tunnels. So what we're going to want to do is that I'm going to create one tunnel that's going to go to router 5, so I'm going from router 6 to 5, and I'm going to create that tunnel, and it's going to go from... Six, seven, eight, two, and five. Right, and so when that's completed, uh, those that's my tail here. This is my tail end here. Oh, I keep telling the tail end. This is my head. Just gonna use some text. So this is my head end here. And then this is my tail for that particular tunnel here, right? So there's a the couple terms you have to understand with uh, MPLS fast reroute that is very important. And if you don't, uh, it, it's very difficult to decipher between link and node protection. So in this particular case, we're going to actually be doing link protection. We're just going to do link protection. And you have to identify two different parts of the network which is going to be your point of local repair, which is your PLR, and then your merge point, which is your uh, MP. Now, what the PLR is, is that he is going to be the head end for the fast rerouted tunnel in the core. So in this particular case, my PLR is going to be router 7 because he's going to be the point of local repair of determining whether he can get to that interface between him and R8. And our merge point in this particular case for next for for uh, link protection, it's going to be route uh, uh, router R8. So, what's going to have to happen is is that we're going to be uh, let's see, it's not what I wanted. What's going to have to happen is we're going to be protecting on this link here. We're going to be watching on this link here, and you can actually so there's there's a couple ways that you can do uh, use for for detecting uh, link failure, and Commercial deployments, where you're going to use is BFD, um, so you can have bi-directional failure detection, um, and that way it can be also hard uh, uh, offloaded into hardware, uh, and then you can get sub millisecond uh, failure detection rather than relying on the Hello protocol of ISIS, or you can actually configure RSVP fast flows between R7 and R8. But in this particular case, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be shutting down the physical interface to trigger the reroute. Um, but in most deployments, you're going to want to use BFD and uh, detection. But in my particular lab, because I have a mixture between iOS XR and XE, um, I, XE doesn't, so XR doesn't support um, BFD. Um, the XRV uh, meeting because that's actually done in hardware and because there's no line card present for the software to talk to um, it just doesn't work so um, just a side note just to add, point that out so in the configuration of this particular fake is we're going to focus on the tunnel between R6 and R5 and then once those tunnels are configured we're going to configure the fast reroute tunnels which is going to be between R7 and R8 and I'll show you guys a syntax to get that done so first, let's go ahead and log into router 6. So show IP interface brief. We're on router 6 now. You notice there's no tunnels there. Show IP explicit paths. We have no explicit paths either. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to identify what path we're taking 
um, to actually get to router 5 that we want to specify. In this particular case, we're going to use 7, 8, 2, and 5. That's going to be our path. So let's go ahead and configure our explicit path. Let's call this 2R5. And then next address is going to be We're going to do 7, I believe I said 8, and then 2, and 5. So 7, 8, 2, and 5 is going to be our path. And next we're going to want to do is configure our tunnels, our tunnel. So we're going to call this tunnel 65. We're going to do tunnel mode, MPLS traffic engineering. Okay, and so we got the tunnel mode and PLS traffic engineering. We want to do tunnel destination, which is going to be router 5's loopback address, IP, IP unnumbered, loopback 0. And then we want to do tunnel and PLS traffic engineering path option 1, explicit name 2R5. And we should see that tunnel come up as we do. Oh, and then another thing we're going to want to do is 65, we want to do tunnel, MPLS, traffic engineering, auto route, announce. So that way the tunnel is actually being used for router 5 as you can see it is, right? So we just go do a basic trace to make sure that it works. Do a show MPLS forwarding table. And to go to router 5, it's showing pop label, but we're actually using the traffic engineering tunnel. So if we do show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel, tunnel 65, the out label is 21. And we go back to the trace route, we notice that the out label is 21. So that was signaled all the way through the core. And um, one of the things that you guys uh, wanted to point out too is that. In the explicit route, even though I put the loopback addresses of the routers in a path, it will go ahead and recursively figure out the actual transit interfaces for me. So I didn't actually have to put the transit interfaces or else I could have went in and actually put the explicit interfaces that I wanted it to go through. But in this particular case, because I want the recursion process to actually discover which the exit interfaces that it will be, which in more than likely it's going to be following the IGP path, um, I went ahead and left those explicit routes um, I just went ahead and let it do that on its own. So that's why you're not actually seeing the loopback addresses in the explicit route itself. So we'll go ahead and now, so now we have this tunnel built. Yellow's tunnel was built. And so the next tunnel that we're going to need to build is we're going to change the color to red or pink, whatever this is. And we're going to build a tunnel from router 7 to router 8, which if this fails, I believe the way I did the costing, it should go through router 14 and then to router 2 yeah it should go that way so let's just verify let's build a tunnel out real quick because I can't remember what the path it's going to take but we're going to build a tunnel out show IP explicit route so I did already have this rebuilt but let's go ahead and just delete this we'll start this from scratch so right now we're on our PLR which is our uh, point of local repair so we're going to do no IP explicit path name. We're just going to do this one. No on that. And then also R8. So the first thing, so the difference between node protection and this is what makes, this is what makes node protection, uh, what it is and link protection, what it is, is based off of the exclude address that you have in your explicit path on the PLR. So on the PLR, what you want to do is for link protection, you want to put the IP address of the interface. For node protection, you want to put the IP address of the actual node that you want to protect. But that when we go into the node protection, I'll explain what the difference is there. But so in this particular case, we want to focus on the interface gig three. Right. So we'll go ahead and do a do show IP interface brief. And on gig three, that's the IP address that we wanted to avoid. So we'll do IP explicit path name. We'll call this avoid link R8. 
and then we're going to exclude the address this time. And we're going to take this IP address. It could be this one or the next top address, just as long as one of the inter IP addresses on the interfaces. We're going to exclude that. Right? So let's go ahead and configure our tunnel. So we're going to do interface tunnel, call this tunnel 78, IP unnumbered loop bag 0. Tunnel destination is 10.0.0.8. All right, tunnel MPLS traffic engineering, oh, tunnel mode, MPLS traffic engineering, and then tunnel traffic, tunnel MPLS traffic engineering, path option explicit, path option one, explicit name, and we're going to call, call this avoid link RA. And that should bring up my path. So let's see what the path that it's taking. Show MPLS traffic engineer and tunnels, tunnel 78. So the path that it's actually taking is going to 14 to 2 to 8. So it's going from, so the tunnel that we actually build is going to from 14 to 2 to 8. Now, what you're going to notice is that in this particular case, so what you're going to notice is that in this particular case, we're going to have the tunnel is actually going to, it was formed here. So we're going to go from 14 to 2 to 8. And you notice that the meet point of where the original tunnel comes back in is at the merge point here at router 8. Now, what makes this work is that you're actually tunneling your tunnel within another tunnel. So you're essentially taking this tunnel, encapsulating it in another TE label, passing it through this label, and then you're going to get it back to the merge point so it should originally get back to its original tunnel and it'll go back out router 2. So to demonstrate this, what we're going to actually need to do too, forgot, is on gig 3, we're going to need to do a MPLS traffic engineering backup path and we need to specify the tunnel 78. Now, what we should get, actually we're not going to see it yet, so what this command is specifying is that on gig 3, the interface between gig 3 going to uh, router 8 is going to be monitored for protection uh, for that tunnel. So what we actually need to do also on router 6 is that we need to request that the tunnel be protected. So interface tunnel 65 and then you would do that with the tunnel and PLS traffic engineering um, fast reroute. And so I should get a message now on router 7 that my tunnel is now being protected. And you got that session going up. I think I have BFD configured on here just as a test. But, you know, you know that's what you normally would do. But in this particular case, it's not going to matter because I'm just going to drop the interface anyway. So if I do a show in PLS for, uh, traffic engineering fast reroute database, you'll notice that the tunnel 65 that I configured earlier um was going out of the out interface of is going out of the out interface of gig three, which is using the fast tunnel fast reroute tunnel of seventy eight. So what's gonna happen is let me show you guys a trace route before the failure. So we'll do a to router five. Now before the failure we're gonna be going to the path that we specified. We're gonna be going from seven to eight to two to five. Right, so what we're going to do is on gig 3, I'm going to shut that interface down. We're going to shut that down. That's going to trigger the fast reroute. And now you're going to see this additional label that gets pulled in. But what's going to look like a routing loop actually is not a routing loop because you're actually in another LSP. So what's happening is that label of 41, which is actually used for the explicit, uh, for the reroute, is actually going through this path. Right, so I should be going through router 14, which I am, to router 2, which I am, back to router 8, then goes back up to router 2, then it again eventually gets to our destination at router 5. So that's what uh, link protection looks like um, on a MPLS traffic engineering tunnel. So once again, let's go over the review. We noticed that Let's go ahead and bring that link back up. No shot. And then let's go ahead and re-optimize the tunnel. Tunnel or 
MPLS traffic engineering reoptimized, and we should be going back the original path now. Let's see. Might take a few seconds. Reoptimize, reoptimize. Interesting. We're not going over the path yet. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, now we're going back over the original path. So, in review, we created a tunnel between R6 and R5, which is going straight through the network. Now, for link protection, we went ahead and we configured a tunnel between R7 and R8, and it's going through this path here. If this link goes down, the path would divert to using this path, but it would be inserted into another TE tunnel path, which would then pop it out at the merge point, which would then bring it back to the original LSP to get you to your final destination. So that is MPLS um, link protection, uh, fast reroute with uh, link protection. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do another example here of what it looks like with node protection.